Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, count all valid pickup and delivery options. This one is a hard, but it's actually easier than you would think, especially if you are good at like discrete math and more specifically, if you're good at like combinatorics and like stats and probability. I'm not the best at that, but I'm familiar enough with it that this problem was actually pretty trivial for me to solve and I'll kind of explain why that is. We're given n orders and to be honest, this problem is worded not like very well. You won't understand it at all from reading the description. I would just go straight to the examples. So we're given n orders. In this case, n is one. Now that's a little bit misleading because for each order, we have to pick it up and then we have to drop it off. The catch is that for any particular order, like for the ith order, we have to pick it up before we can drop it off. That makes sense. But now what if we're given like 10 orders? Well, we'll have pick up maybe I plus one and we have to drop it off after as well. So the drop off for I plus one also has to happen after the I plus one pickup. But other than that, there isn't any restriction like we can pick up the first order and then pick up the second order and then pick up all the other orders and then drop all of them off. We can't, of course, drop off an order before we've picked it up. So that's literally the only restriction. And the only thing we're trying to do here is count the number of possible ways that we can do valid deliveries. In my opinion, the best way to think about this problem is not in terms of n, but actually in terms of n times two. Let me show you what I mean. Let's consider the example where n is equal to two. So then I'm gonna draw four slots, one for each pickup slash delivery. So I'm gonna call these P1 and a D1. P is for pickup, D is for drop off. And this is one valid way of doing things. Pick up one, then drop off one, then pick up two, then drop off two. So that's just one valid way. And in total, if you look down here, there's actually six valid ways of doing it. And just to like very roughly show you that, uh, visually, we know we have to either start with P1 or we have to start with P2. You can't do a drop off before you've done a pickup. That makes sense. But consider when we choose P1 first, how many possible ways can we arrange the rest of these? Well, we can either start with P2 or we can start, I think, with D1. We can't do D2 unless we've already picked up P2. So we have three slots to fill. I'll quickly just go over this decision tree just to show you. But here we can either choose D1 or D2. And then whichever one we end up picking then is gonna be the opposite of what we pick next. So there's one, two valid ways, and then here, is pretty straightforward here. We can't pick up D2. We can only pick up P2 and then we do a drop off two. So there's three ways of rearranging these starting with P1. Similarly, there's gonna be three ways of doing that starting with P2. So in total, there's gonna be six ways. I didn't show you all six ways, but I think it's reasonable enough that we can assume there's six ways. Now that doesn't necessarily help us arrive at the best solution, but it gives us a bit of the intuition of how we are rearranging these variables, these pickups and these drop-offs. There's many solutions to this problem, but in my opinion, the simplest one is this. Like this is the thought process of solving this problem. We have this many slots. In this case, it's four, but it's gonna be some arbitrary number n times two, whatever n happens to be, that's gonna be the parameter for us. Now, if we were just doing raw permutations, we would say, okay, well, four times three times two times one, or in other words, two times n factorial. That's how we count permutations. But we know there's actually a restriction here. It's not that simple because if we put like D1 here, we can't do that. We can't put the drop off before the pickup. It doesn't work. So what's the restriction here? Well, how about we place that pair P1, D1 at the same time, like at least mathematically, we're going to place these two values at the same time. So we have this many slots, two times n slots, and we are trying to place two values in those slots. What is the math formula for that? Do you happen to know it? It's not super complicated because you can break it down into, well, the first choice, we can put the first one in any of the positions. In other words, and I'm just gonna start using a new variable for like the length of this because I don't wanna keep saying two n. Let's just say it's x. That's the length, that's the number of the slots. So we have x choices when we make the first 
choice. So let's say I put P1 here. Now the next choice, we have X minus one choices. We can put D1 in any of these positions, but we're gonna end up with a lot of ways that we placed those two values. Half of the way we place the values is gonna put D1 in front of P1. They're gonna look like this, like this is one valid way. This is one way we could place those. This is also another way we could place those. Both of these ways are invalid. Now the opposites are also going to be true. The opposites where P1 was first and D1 was after. Half of the combinations are gonna have P1 coming first. Half of the combinations are gonna have D1 coming first. So we can take that math formula, uh, X, times x minus one and just divide it by two. Why not? We're not looking to actually create all of the unique paths, all the unique delivery sequences. We're just looking to count them. So this tells us after we've placed two of those things, I don't even know what to call them at this point, P1 and D1, we place them, this is how many valid ways we could place them. And now we have a new sub problem. We started with let's say X slots. We had four of them to be exact. Now we only have two slots. So we would just repeat this, repeating this equation, just updating the X every single time. And every time we calculate this, we would multiply it with the previous result because that's how you kind of count the number of ways. Now, even if you're not like a math person, I still encourage you to sometimes think about problems in a mathematical way because especially the dynamic programming problems really are just just discrete math under the hood. So if you can kind of understand it from that perspective, solving the problems definitely becomes easier. I've been planning on making like a discrete math crash course for a long time. If you think that would be helpful, definitely let me know. But without further ado, let's get into the code. It's gonna be pretty easy. Coding it up, and these are just some comments that I had for myself. I guess I'll kind of finish them in case you didn't understand the previous part of the explanation. But remember there's two times n slots, we want to first count the valid number of ways to place any particular pair. And we know that this is how many ways we could place the pairs. But to get the valid number of pairs, we take that n times uh, n minus 1, or I guess we were using x originally, so I'll switch it up to that. But taking this number and then dividing it by 2. This is going to be the valid choices. That's pretty much it. So let's get our total number of slots, pretty much just following the comments here. While the number of slots, the unfilled slots is greater than zero, let's calculate the number of valid choices we have, which is just going to be the number of slots, to be honest. X is, in this case, the number of slots multiplied by slots minus one, and then divide that by two, which will be the valid number of choices. This should be an integer regardless. I don't know even know why I'm putting uh, double slashes here, but this is going to be the number of valid choices. And we probably should declare our result somewhere. So I'm going to put output here. It's initially going to be one because that's kind of like the base case. If n is 1, 1 is going to be the result. And also it's a neutral number. So when we here put output is going to be multiplied by the number of valid choices, then like the computation will work out because when it starts out as 1, it'll end up being replaced with this value. And every time we fill some slots, we should probably also decrement the number of slots by 2. Now, after we're done with that, don't forget that actually in the prompt, they told us to return the output modded by 10 to the power of nine plus seven. And in Python, I can get away with doing that at the end because uh, integers or numbers are arbitrarily large in Python, but you might need to move this mod uh, over here. But in any case, let's run the code to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.